What if the road to a greener future took an unexpected detour? President Biden has bowed to pressure from automakers, dealers, and car owners, marking a shift in the government's approach to electric vehicles. Gone are the days of relentless support for strict emission standards and a lightning-fast transition to EVs. Instead, a new narrative emerges, one where ambitious targets collide with harsh realities. Initially eyeing a bold 60% electrification share by 2030, the administration now faces the fateful truth. Perhaps the path to sustainability demands a more practical pace. Just a short while ago, many people were pumped up and excited about electric cars. It was as if they were rooting for them to become the coolest thing in getting around. Initially, it seemed like EVs were selling like hotcakes. People were full of hope, believing that electrification was going to revolutionize transportation as we knew it. But then, something changed. The excitement started to fall. The electric cars didn't seem to be flying off the shelves like they used to. Even though they had a strong start, they didn't maintain the same momentum at all. It's like the hype slowed down, leaving people wondering what happened to all the buzz about electric cars. Despite the initial interest, electric cars didn't quite reach the sky-high expectations that many had for them. But then, something unexpected happened. The excitement started to fizzle out. Sales of EVs didn't keep moving like everyone had hoped. It was like they hit a speed bump on the road to success. People started to wonder, what happened? Why aren't electric cars as popular as we thought they'd be? It turns out that electric cars were just a small slice of the overall car market. While they had some loyal fans, they hadn't become the top choice for most people. It was as if they were trying to figure out where they fit in in the grand scheme of things. Even though electric cars had a strong start and generated a lot of buzz, they didn't become the game changer that many had predicted. They faced challenges in winning over the masses and becoming the default option for drivers. It seemed like they were still working out the minute problems and trying to prove themselves in a world dominated by traditional gasoline-powered vehicles. While electric cars certainly had their perks, like being better for the environment and cheaper to run in the long term, they still had some problems to overcome. Things like limited driving range, higher upfront costs, and a lack of charging infrastructure made it tough for them to compete with the gas-powered cars. As a result, they remained more of a choice rather than a mainstream option for drivers. Despite the initial excitement and optimism surrounding EVs, they didn't achieve the widespread adoption that many had visioned. It became clear that the road to becoming a staple in the automotive industry industry was longer and more challenging than anticipated. As the upcoming presidential election draws near, the race to win votes is heating up. Both candidates are working hard to convince people to vote for them. And guess what's become the major topic in this election showdown? Electric cars. Electric cars are taking the spotlight, and each candidate is trying to win over different groups of people who care about them. It's like watching a big, intense battle unfold, but instead of swords and shields, it's all about policies and promises. Both candidates know that EVs are a big deal for a lot of people. Some people care about the environment and want cleaner air, while others might be more interested in saving money on gas. You've got one candidate saying, Hey, I'm all about supporting electric cars. Let's invest in more charging stations and give people incentives to buy them. And then you've got the other candidate saying, Hold on a minute. Electric cars are cool and all, but we need to make sure they're affordable for everyone. Let's focus on making them more accessible. Big car companies like Ford and GM are putting a whole bunch of money into making EVs. They're like, hey, let's get on this electric car action. But here's the catch. Even though they're shelling out lots of cash and making these EVs, they're not really making a lot of money back just yet. It's like they're spending and spending, but the profits aren't rolling in like they had hoped. They're investing heavily in building these vehicles, but the money they're making from selling them isn't matching up to what they're putting in. So, even though they're all excited about electric cars and want to be part of the green revolution, they're still trying to figure out how to make it work financially. 
So, these big car companies are in a bit of a tough spot. Making EVs costs them a lot of money and not enough people are buying them just yet. That means they're not making as much money as they had hoped. There are strict rules they have to follow about how clean their cars need to be. It's like they're stuck between a rock and a hard place. One major reason why more folks aren't jumping on the electric car train is because they aren't enough places to charge them. Without a bunch of charging stations scattered around, it's tough for people to feel comfortable about buying an EV. It's like having a car with a tank that's always on empty and only a few gas stations in town. You'd probably think twice about driving that car. That's the situation with electric cars right now. For some folks, having a charging station at home is like having their own personal gas pump for their electric car. But what about when they're on the go? That's when things start to get a little out of hand. Without enough charging spots in places like malls, parking lots, or along highways, people start to feel anxious about the possibility of their car's battery dying on them while they're out and about. And let's be real, nobody wants to be stuck in the middle of nowhere with a dead battery. Having charging stations in convenient spots is the key to making EVs more practical for everyday use. Just like how you need gas stations sprinkled throughout a city, having plenty of charging spots in high traffic areas is crucial for electric car drivers. It's all about giving people peace of mind, knowing that they can top up their car's battery whenever they need to, just like filling up at a gas station. Until there are more charging stations popping up all over the place, it's going to be a battle to get more people on board with EVs. Let's face it, convenience is key when it comes to making big decisions, like what kind of car to buy. And until charging an electric car is as easy as charging your phone, many folks will stick to the good old gas-powered cars. Expanding the number of charging stations is no small task. It's a Herculean task that requires a ton of money and hard work to make it happen. You've got to find suitable locations, set up the charging equipment, and make sure everything is up to mark. It's like building a bunch of mini gas stations, but instead of filling it up with gasoline, you're juicing up cars with electricity. Can the government keep pace with the growing demand for electric cars? Sure, you can do it, but it's gonna take a while. With more and more people interested in EVs, the pressure is on to ramp up the number of charging stations, and fast. The thing is, the government has to deal with a lot of priorities and make tough decisions about where to allocate resources. Do they focus on building more roads, improving schools, or expanding healthcare? And now, adding charging stations for EVs to the mix makes things even more complicated. It's like trying to spin a bunch of plates all at once without letting any of them crash to the ground. Thank you for watching. If you found the video insightful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified when we post new videos. Leave a comment below. Until next time.